I got a request to make a video about lipid aggregates and what shapes get made and what shapes don't get made. And so we just briefly talked about this in class, so this is going to be a really generalized uh, tip of the iceberg um, presentation because this can go a lot deeper when you start talking about um, how there are bends in a cell and how a cell shape changes. That's, an, that's a lot deeper, deeper than we go in our class. Um, the depth that we went was talking about how you could have my cells. So I'm gonna draw my cell here. And you can also have bilayers. And you can also have vesicles. And so both a vesicle and a mylayer are spheres, but if you cut through them and look at a cross-section, you'll see that a vesicle inside has some aqueous space. So there's like a water-filled aqueous space in the center, and then we're talking about lipid aggregates forming in a water environment. So if you were to take the cross-section through, through a micelle, there would be no internal aqueous space, we would just see, I'm going to draw kind of a stylized version. You'd see all of these lipids coming together and packing together uh, really closely, leaving no space between them, and that's very thermodynamically favorable. So if you're a lipid that takes up like a cone-shaped space of space in the world, for example, like you're a fatty acid, The amount of space you take up is like a cone shape. The de definition of this cone shape is that the width of your head is bigger than the width of your tail. So that's going to give that cone shape definition. And because of that, you can see that cones can just come together and pack really nice and tight. And this happens in a sphere-like shape. And then you get your micelle. What happens if you're not cone-shaped? Let's look at that. So over here, with the bilayer and the vesicle, we've got two other shapes happening. A bilayer is actually not very thermodynamically stable. So although it will get formed, it doesn't stay around very long. It's not a stable aggregate. So if you are cylinder shaped. The amount of space you take up in the world as a lipid is a cylinder. That means that your cross section of your head is just as wide as the cross section of your tail. The most obvious example of this that we talked about in our class is a glycerophospholipid. It's got two fatty acid tails, a wide head that matches the width of the tails, and that's going to be more of a cylinder shape. Now, what if the cylinders come together and you think maybe they'll make a micelle? Well, in a situation like this, where they're coming together, they're not able to be most thermodynamically stable because look at all the water that would be exposed to all of their nonpolar regions, that's not very thermodynamically stable. So although, they, although you might imagine they can come together like this, this isn't going to follow the rules of thermodynamics very well. What will? Well, these cylinder shapes can come together side by side like this, and that's quite stable. And if you have nonpolar tails, facing each other, 
remember from our very early discussions about entropy, the entropy of water, the entropy of a system is always going to be maximized, or I should say system and its surroundings, that's more accurate. The second law of thermodynamics is that entropy is always increasing. And so by keeping these non-polar tails facing each other, you're going to minimize ordered water. And so here you've got your bilayer. That's what we have up here. But the reason that this is not stable is that you have the tails facing each other, but at the edges, so this is a three-dimensional thing, at the edges, you still have contact of water with some nonpolar regions. And that's not maximum thermodynamic stability. So what happens is that the bilayer grows enough so that it can fold onto itself. So this side comes and links up to the other side to make a circle, make a sphere. And so when that happens, you have maximum thermodynamic stability for cylinder-shaped lipid aggregates. You don't have any of the nonpolar tails in contact with water, and that's key. So all the nonpolar tails are away from water. And those polar heads are in contact with water either inside if they're facing toward the inside of the, the vesicle or on the outside. And so a vesicle is very reminiscent of a cell in which you have a lipid bilayer as the outer membrane and then the inside you've got this aqueous environment where all your organelles live if you're a eukaryote. So hopefully this um, answered some of the questions. If you have more, please do post on Piazza or comment below. Thank you.